me that is all I'll need. Yo, I'm still at your heart tonight. Step my hand and step by my side. What's going on guys? Bullseye209 back at it again with another video with you guys. Hopefully you guys are all doing awesome. Um, but today is the day guys. I'm very excited. Um, this is the PC build that we've been saving up for, for about two months. Um, and this is what we got. Um, <laughs> so I'm very excited. This, this PC is going to be basically for streaming and for gaming. Um, but primarily for streaming. Um, we probably will get into a few games. Um, but I definitely want to um, be able to just stream everything I want um, with no problems. Eventually, we might want to upgrade in the near future, but um, for right now, this is what we have. So we're just going to go over the parts, um, and then we'll we'll get into the um, installation, I guess you could say. Um, it isn't going to be like an in-depth installation, because this is my first time building a PC, so I'm just really excited. I've watched plenty of walkthroughs. Um, and I'll link some in the description just in case you guys are interested in those. This is going to be started off with the MSI B450 Tomahawk motherboard. This is basically going to be everything we're going to need out of a motherboard. Um, we, we shouldn't need anything more. I'm not too knowledgeable obviously in half these parts, um, but I've looked at a lot of like reviews on certain things. This is definitely uh, one of those better ones. There are obviously some better out there that are higher end. This guy ran us about $100, so not crazy, crazy expensive, but definitely a good buy. Um, so, on our graphics card, we went with the N our EVGA um, GTX 1060. Um, this is the SSC edition, so it definitely it comes already um, overcloaked, um, which I'm pretty hyped about because um, we won't, probably won't have to touch that at all. Um, and then for our processor guys, this guy came in the mail maybe we, maybe 10 minutes ago. So I'm very excited about this. This is what we were waiting for. Um, this is the Ryzen 5 2600. Uh, it isn't the X version just because um, the X version is just a little bit more expensive and we want it to be, uh, I want it, not the cheaper way out, but <laughs> uh, just to be a cost, most cost efficient for me. Um, so this is the one we actually purchased. Um, and for the next thing, we got some RAM. RAM, some uh, Delta T-Force. Uh, this is the eight gigabyte kit, so two, get two four gig sticks. Um, this is um, has a 3,000. 3, yeah, the speed's 3,000, which is definitely uh, pretty decent for what we're going to be using it for. Um, we're going to move on to the hard drive. Uh, we have the uh, Western Digital Blue one terabyte hard drive, um, and also a um, Kingston 120 gigabyte SSD. Um, and so we have a couple little miscellaneous stuff. These are some wire extensions just to make it look a little pretty, um, which I'm pretty hyped about as well. Those just came in as well. And we have a Wi-Fi stick, so when we actually do install um, Windows, we have immediate Wi-Fi. Uh, we have a hard drive, external hard drive, um, that has already, already installed um, Windows 10 onto this. Um, so once we get into our setup of the computer, uh, we should be pretty simple. Um, you guys can also use a uh, USB drive. Um, it just has to have uh, 8 gigs of memory on that. Um, and then we just have a little bit of a tool kit here with some screwdrivers and miscellaneous stuff that we're going to be using. Um, so yeah, that's just about it. Um, oh, I almost forgot the case. Guys, I'm sorry. The case. Um, I'll show you guys a little bit later, but it's the um, Rosewill Colonin case. Um, it's a it's a mid-tower case, um, and it, it's, it's actually pretty big for the mid-tower size. Um, there's going to probably be a lot of extra room, um, but it has three panels of gla uh, tempered glass um, and it has four pre-installed LED fans. Um, and we got the red version, so uh, there are going to be red lights in there. And everything should coordinate pretty well. It should look pretty well. Um, so let's hop into it. We're going to start with the motherboard and get the CPU on the way. Alrighty guys, so we're going to start off with unboxing the motherboard. Um, when you open everything. Uh, you should see the motherboard right in the front of the box. We're going to uh, open the bottom layer to get our IO shield and our SATA cables. Um, you guys can install all the drivers off the disks, but normally you just go to the manufacturer's site to uh, drive uh, install the drivers there. We're going to take the uh, static bag off um, and install our uh, CPU. This is the fan and the CPU. First, we're going to uh, open the lever on the uh, CPU header uh, on the motherboard and just uh, pretty much pull the lever up and uh, there's gonna be a little um, dot on mine and there's gonna be different ones for everyone else's motherboard uh, but it's gonna coordinate to the uh, CPU gold triangle on the bottom left 
So we're just going to drop that into place and then put the latch back down. And then from here, um, we're going to install the RAM. And uh, this is the Delta T Force. Never installed RAM before, so hopefully this goes well. Um, every motherboard is different though, so I'd definitely look either into your um, your your on your motherboard or also in your um, <clears throat> booklet. It comes with the motherboard. Uh, mine says it right there though, and these are the so slots to occupy first. Um, so we're just gonna stick these guys right in push pretty firmly until the clips go right back up and that means that shows you that they are um, pushed in all the way and next we're gonna take off these brackets um, for the um, CPU fan to go right on top of the CPU um, so these I don't know if you guys see the thermal paste actually is on the already pre-installed on the fan so you guys will not need to buy any separate thermal paste so we're going to get our screwdriver and start screwing away. Um, if you guys are installing a aftermarket cooler, definitely look at the um, instructions to do that because everything is different. Um, every cooler is different, every liquid cooler fan is a little bit different to how to install it. So just make sure to look at that. Um, here we're just going to basically put it um, so we have uh, plenty of slack on our um, CPU header fan, uh, the wire that actually goes into the motherboard. Um, so we can plug that in. And so we're just going to screw it in a crisscross pattern to make sure everything is um, evenly um, tightened down. And then from there, we're going to install the uh, the actual cord to the header fan um, slot on the motherboard. And then we're also going to tuck away that cord so that you can't see it. Next, we're going to install the IO shield. You guys will see me fail here. I end up dropping it. Um, this guy can be pretty tricky to install. Just make sure to push on each corner. Um, if you do push in the middle, you do have a risk of breaking it, um, which will be a pain in the butt later on. Um, so just try to install that perfectly. Next, we're going to be installing the motherboard. Um, so make sure all your standoffs are correct in the right spots, um, lower it in there obviously and then line it up with the IO shield and uh, after you have that you push it through the IO shield and also lining up the uh, standoffs that are installed. Uh, mine came with nine um, standoffs which, uh, which I have nine holes basically in my motherboard for so tighten those down make sure not to tighten them too tight you don't want to damage your motherboard in any way. Next is the power supply. Um, we have our 500 watt uh, EVGA, um, and this isn't the uh, modular one, so we're gonna have some ugly colors. Um, that's why we got those wire extensions. Uh, I actually made a mistake here, um, thinking just putting the wires through, because I've seen it both ways where you can kind of just put the power supply in, but I put the wires through, thinking it would fit perfectly and we got to about this point and we're like uh yikes <laughs> so um, we just pull that guy out turn the case around and put it on there mine actually came fortunate enough to come with a, a dust filter and also it has like almost prop stands um, and I actually put it in sideways again thinking it's perfectly right pointing saying hey it should be right here right uh, and making more mistakes aka I'm a noob at building PCs. Uh, from there, tighten uh, all your bolts on there. Uh, you want this to be pretty snug. You definitely don't want to um, have any wiggle in it because um, that will uh, put you at risk for wires coming disconnected later on, uh, which you definitely don't want. So try to get these snug. You don't have to do crisscross pattern, but obviously it does help. And like I said, just tighten them down pretty good. And now we're going to be moving on to the hard drive and SSD. Alrighty guys, and if you guys can see, uh, we do have two slots we could install a um, hard drive in. Um, we only have one, so we will be occupying the bottom slot. So we're going to get our Western Dental um, hard drive and uh, unbox it out of the box and pull out the bottom 
sleeve for the um, hard drive. And lucky enough, actually, the are my slots that came with the um, for the um, hard drives are pretty cool. They actually have this little notch where you can actually open up instead of having to bend it open. It actually opens up a little bit bigger. You just basically set it in there, and uh, there's going to be some little grooves that the um, it should clamp against. And make sure you guys do install this correctly. Uh, you want the your wire ports facing outwards um, so that you can obviously plug them in pretty easily. Um, we do end up putting two bolts in here. It's very, it's not really necessary. Um, I was just, this is my first PC build. I wanted to do it right and make sure everything was going to be perfect. So when I started up, it was going to turn on. <laughs> not saying yours won't. Uh, there's just definitely a lot of possibilities that come into play. So we're going to, uh, power cable and plug that guy in. It's going to be an L shape so it only goes in one way. Uh, I try to show you guys it's a little hard to see on camera um, but that guy only goes in one way so if it doesn't fit flip it around and try it again. And so now we're going to reach over and get our uh, SATA cables. Those are the cables that actually came with the motherboard. Uh, they should be underneath in the cardboard. Um, these guys will be what plugs in from your hard drive to your motherboard. Um, you will get sometimes those uh, 90 degree angles with them, um, which can be handy for some cases. Um, so those only go in one way as well, so that we, then we just slide that in. We sneak our um, cable through our slot, so uh, once we are done installing all the memory, um, it should be plug and play after that. Um, but next is the SSD. And so we do have three slots, we end up using the very right slot. Um, um, some some cases aren't always like slots like this. You can install it actually completely on the side, where you just screw in bolts into your actual case. Um, mine I think is a little bit more organized, um, where you can kind of just take this off and put the SSD on. Um, like I said, make sure your ports are facing the correct way before you install the bolts. You don't have to um, put four bolts in like I do. Um, you can always always just put two bolts in, or even probably one. Um, I just wanted to be basically just have no problems at the very end of this. Um, those are my four screws. We're gonna gather those up. I think I end up failing like three or four times uh, putting these screws in, um, but it does happen. Um, I will link this little toolkit I got as well in the uh, description. Um, because uh, at first I wasn't a fan of this screwdriver because it was not magnetized but it comes with a little extension attachment um, that is magnetized so um, I definitely my whole perspective on it changed and so this is the last one as we mess up again uh, I think we go back and tighten it all just to be 100% secure um, if it isn't secure you do have potential of it moving and stuff and uh, your your power cords and your your SATA cables to come a little loose, but for the most part they're pretty secure. Um, so um, we are going this the CPU um, power will be going through that hole. We have plenty of room for that, um, but I think we're going to be running it in that little groove on the very right of my case. Um, so um, I think this uh, SSD will hold it into place really well uh, and fit perfectly just about. So this is that's why we actually uh, thought about putting it right there. We're gonna get our SATA cable for our SSD and plug it in. Same way, it's literally the same exact way as the hard drives. Um, and we're gonna fish that guy through as well. So when we hook up the wires for the SATA, um, they're already through, like you see now. Um, there's multiple SATA cables on every different uh, motherboard out there so uh, just locate them that's why I said sometimes that 90 degree can be handy in my case it wasn't that big of a deal or handy I probably could have used it to hide one of the wires um, but ended up just making it a little simple because it's, it's not really noticeable in general because they're black wires on black uh, in, a, in a black case so you can barely see them in general
And we do have that little vent down there, which is going to be really handy for our GPU uh, power. So we're going to flip the case around once again. Uh, and I think we're re going to get our um, our wire extensions. And so uh, we're only going to need three. And one's going to be for the CPU power. The other one's going to be for the GPU power. And the last one's for the 24 pin, which you guys saw right now, which is going to actually plug directly into the motherboard. And so after we uh, get those wire extensions all put together, I try to uh, not get tangled up in some of the wires. Um, and then we um, fish through our our GPU down through that little slot I just talked about. And the next one's going to go um, in that little groove, where, like I said, where the CPU up in that very right corner, um, which is going to should slide perfectly in there. And then we try to tuck that away as well to hide the wire for some good cable management. Um, in the general, I didn't do the best in cable management. I don't even think I put a clip of it in here. Um, I kind of just stuffed all my cables in that little excess area um, right behind the power supply. Um, I had plenty of room. Um, I did have one little issue. Uh, well, actually, that CPU um, power cord, which I just put into that corner. The clip is just against that that metal piece, so it, it did fit. It just because uh, my my uh, case had rubber grommets to have a little excess room. I don't know if you guys noticed though, I did forget to um, install the uh, power on the SSD, on the SATA power cable on it. Um, so we just uh, hurry up and did that right then. And then the 24 pin is gonna go through the big slot on the very left. And then uh, since all these are fished through, uh, after this guy is already pushed all the way through, we can flip the whole case around and then all our wires should be poked through. Uh, there's not a certain way you have to connect everything. Um, we just started with the 24 pin. Um, typically you can hear normally it clicks, but you want to make sure it either clicks or you have um, visibility that it's all the way flush to the clip, the actual motherboard clip. Um, you definitely don't want any um, gap in between because it will if it does turn on it'll short out um, because it's not plugged in all the way or it just won't turn on at all um, and then we're gonna plug in that CPU um, power connection right there and this one's our, our GPU power um, but um, we will in be installing that I think next but uh, it's typically last in all the builds um, I didn't actually record this part um, but these are all the case cables plugged in um, I didn't record it because it was kind of a pain in the butt for me um, every case will be different so um, obviously not it's kinda hard to make a video on uh, something that's different for everyone so but uh, they should you should for the most part have around the same um, connections but it's just going to be different on how you're going to be plugging them into your motherboard we were going to be using this uh, these covers for some of the excess wires um, but I didn't have some problems with uh, the thicker wires like the USB 3.0 port um, so we didn't end up using those so now we're going to be installing our GPU our EVGA 1060 um, which is uh, I'm actually really liking um, with, I'm actually I've been playing video games on it lately. I'm actually going to be doing a whole review on it in general uh, in the later future. So you may, you have to make sure that latch on my case at least you have to make sure that latch is opened so you have plenty of room to uh, uh, to install it. Um, and so um, I've been told to make sure you always uh, install your GPU on the top slot for the best performance. So that's what we're doing here. And so we just line up the holes. Uh, we're having a little issue with uh, fitting it just correctly, but we finally get it. And then you want to push it until it um, makes a click noise. And similar to the RAM, uh, the clip should be pushed uh, clamped closed, as you guys can maybe see on the very right. And so from there, um, it is time to. Um, bolt this guy down so that it's not going to be moving and so uh, this my graphics card in particular took two slots of the 
little metal brackets um, in the back of the case. Um, so we, like I said, we fish that cable through, um, and we're just gonna hook it up right there. And it ended up working perfect. Uh, I actually really like this case. Um, obviously, it's my first build, so I don't really know what else is out there. But I have seen plenty of videos where people are struggling on room, um, and I'm thankful that we had just about plenty of room for anything. I do hopefully want to be installing a radiator on the very top because I have had some issues with my uh, my CPU overheating, um, which we will have plenty of room for that. Um, and right there, we're just uh, kind of touching up some wires just to make sure because one actually didn't come with any uh, cover over it, so it was just some crazy colors. So we. Alrighty, guys, this is the moment of truth. We're gonna flip the switch in the back and push the power button, and hopefully it turns on. Oh, guys! <laughs> 